Okay, so when it comes to perch fishing, and especially big perch, there's one lure that really stands out head and shoulders for me, and they are creature baits. Now there's three main creature baits in the Fox Rage lineup, and we're gonna talk about how we can fish these creature baits in different ways to make the most of any given situation. So the first method I want to talk about with creature baits is a real simple one, and it's just simple jig fishing. I'm talking an open jig, um, the point's exposed, um, we can mount any type of creature bait that we want on there, and we can fish it very quickly, very simply, and it can be a deadly method when you're fishing open water, um, large gravel pits, large rivers, any type of open water situation where there isn't any snags, there isn't any weed, there isn't any debris on the bottom. And what this will do, what an open jig will do over everything else is give you better hookup ratio. And that's gonna mean you land more fish and put them in your net. Like I said, this is a really simple method. However, there's a few things you just need to get right to make the most of it. Okay, so one of my favorite lures for fishing on open jig is the mini craw. The reason I like the mini craw for fishing jigs, it's got quite a chunky body. It's got a long, chunky body that lends itself perfectly to rigging on jig heads. Um, we've got the eight centimetre version here in green pumpkin, which is one of my favourite sizes and colour combinations. And with that, I've got a size 3.0, five gram jig. Now the reason I've gone for five gram um, is because I want a nice slow fall on this bait. This bait has got lovely arms on it that give a swimming motion as it falls. And I believe this bait is absolutely perfect for fishing on the drop because of that action. So I tend to go as light as I can with this lure. Um, and again, for hitting it mid water and things like that, that open jig is gonna give you a better chance of getting a hookup. Okay, so to mount this lure, it's really simple. I've got my hook, which is like I said, a 3.0, um, five gram. And I'm gonna lay that on top of the body of the lure um, and just weigh up where the point is gonna come out. And then when I've seen that, I'm gonna just nick that with the point of the hook so I know exactly where that hook point is gonna come out. I can then start threading the, the lure onto the, um, onto the jig head with the lure facing upwards and the jig facing downwards. I can then just keep threading that on. And the important bit here is to take your time, get it nice and straight, and then when you get to that little nick, you can just work that out and you can just exit that point right where you put that little nick. And you should end up with a perfectly straight bait. What you don't want is that is the hook to be going through that body of that lure in a curved pattern. You want it to be dead straight, nice and natural. And with that, the five gram jig head almost blends in with the, uh, with the, with the shape of the body lots and lots of extra sharp hook points showing there so that's really important that's one of our armor point hooks there and like i said because this is great on fishing on drop that open jig head is just going to maximize the amount of fish that you hook so there we have it a great lure that's fished extremely extremely simple perfect for most places where you're not going to have many snags um, and you're expecting bites on the drop so maybe when it's a little bit warmer when the fish are slightly more active that's an absolutely perfect lure and setup for those situations Okay, so the second rig lends itself perfectly to, to waters that are very snaggy, um, weedy, especially this time of year, we're in November, the weed hasn't died right off yet, it's still there. Um, we all know that these perch love to be around snags. Any hard structure, any, any trees that are in the water, um, mussel beds, things like that, that present problems for us as anglers to present baits around. So the rig I wanna talk about now is the Texas rig. A really, really simple rig that lends itself, like I said, perfectly to fishing around all those type of things. So essentially, what we've got here is one of our brand new strike point um, sliding bullet weights in our new camo finish, which look, which look absolutely superb. That slides onto 
your fluorocarbon leader, which in this case I've put 027 um, in our new strike point fluorocarbon, our drop and jig fluorocarbon. I've been using this fluorocarbon for a long time now. I'm super confident with it. Um, the 027 is about, about 11 pound. I find that really strong, really durable. Um, it, it, you can, it's abrasion resistant, really good fluorocarbon. So like I said, we've got about a meter of that fluorocarbon. We've slid our, our sliding bullet weight on, our new camo bullet weight. And at this point, you've got the option. You can put one of our strike point glass beads on um, and then the hook. And what that'll do is create noise in between the weight and the hook. So as that all comes down and clicks together, that'll make a clicking noise and give you some um, extra attraction there. But I quite like fishing it without the glass bead, simply because it's a bit more of a stealthy approach. And I think with the pressured fish that we've got in our waters nowadays, we don't necessarily need that extra noise. I will do if the river's really coloured. If, the, if, the, if we've had flooding and the rivers are coloured, I'll definitely put that bead in. But other than that, I like to just fish it as it is. Um, and then it's simply a case of tying on your chosen hook, which in my case is the awesome armour point hooks, um, offset hooks from our strike point range. So tie that on with your chosen knot. For me, it's a blood knot. Um, I've always used them, they never let me down, so I just keep using them. And the rig is as simple as that, really. Um, we've got a sliding bullet weight. Um, in this case, I've gone quite heavy because what I want to do, what I want to achieve is I want that to pull through any debris. So if there is a little bit of weed or a little bit of some twigs hanging over and stuff like that, I want the lure to be pulled down to the bottom quite quickly. I don't want a light rig where it gets, keeps getting held up in everything. So I've gone for around 12 grams in weight. Um, this is fishing a river that's around six foot in, in depth and a little bit of flow. So not mega deep, but I still want a bit of weight because I want to be able to flip it in, cast it in, let it sink down nice and quick. Um, and that goes through to the lure choice as well. The lure I've chosen for this is the classic critter. Um, again, in green pumpkin, it's one of my favorite colors, the new green pumpkin. Um, but the thing with the critter is it's quite a slim profile. It's still got a lovely swim in action. So you'll get that lovely fall from the lure, but it's very slim in profile. Meaning that, again, it doesn't get caught up on anything. So when you look at the rig, the whole rig is lovely and slim. And that just lends itself perfectly to going through weed, through twigs, through any debris. You know, sometimes you get a part of the river or part of the lake where there's all rubbish on the surface. Again, this rig's perfect for punching through that stuff and getting down to the bottom. And that combination of heavy Texas weight, um, the nine centimeter critter, and a nice big 3-0 hook, it's absolutely perfect. Okay, so this nine centimeter critter sits on this 3-0 hook absolutely perfect. I'm now gonna show you how to rig it. So what you're gonna do is take the point of the hook and push it into the body of the lure about five mil down. And you're gonna exit five mil down towards the bottom of the lure. So the hook is now exiting the bottom of the lure and you're gonna pull that shank round all the way until it gets to the little kink in your, in your offset hook. And as you pull it over that kink, what you're gonna do is actually twist the hook so the point is then facing towards the bottom of the lure. And you'll be left with that. Then all it's a case of doing is taking the point of the hook, working out where it's gonna come up through the bottom of the lure to the top and push it through. And what you should find with the critter is that it comes out in the middle of the weed slot. And a 3-0 hook is absolutely perfectly situated on that to um, give you really good hookups. Now, if it wasn't too weedy, I would fish with it exactly like that. If it was just a light bit of, light bit of weed or some small sticks and things, I'd fish it like that with the hook point just, just, just in that little um, recess. But if it was really weedy, all I would simply do is pull the lure back and just nip, skin hook that point, just so the point is just nicked into the lure. And that gives a totally weedless presentation that you can then cast in, um, in and around structure, and um, be safe in the knowledge that that isn't gonna hook up every time you go in it.
So another really good presentation for creature baits, but one that's often overlooked is the drop shot. For me, the drop shot is a great way of presenting a finesse bait at a distance or in deep water with a heavy weight. You can't do it any other way. You can't keep them two items separate. You can't keep the weight and the hook separate in many methods, but the drop shot does allow you to do that. So for this method, we're using some of the key components of the strike point range. The first being, again, that drop and jig fluorocarbon, which I've got 100% faith in. Um, with, with this rig, we, we can go lighter, but I, again, I'm sticking to 027, about 11 pound. Um, it's nice and durable. If you do happen to, to hook a big fish, you know it's gonna hold up. So what I'm gonna do is take a length of our fluorocarbon, probably about a meter, and a meter and a half, something like that. And I'm gonna half that, so we make a giant loop and then into the center of that loop I'm going to tie one of our strike point drop shot hooks. This is a size four so it's quite small um, and into that that knot is just going to be a palomar knot that's why we've halved it so what you'll end up with is an equal length of fluorocarbon top and bottom of that hook and then when you pull them tight the hook will just stand out on end and the length that's going upwards of the point is going to be to your main line and the length that's going down is going to be your, your link for your for your drop shot weight you can adapt that length to whatever you want cut it down a little bit um, but that's going to be where you put your weight when it comes to the drop shot weight itself i'm a big fan of our new strike point camo drop shot weights brass so they're not toxic um, they've got a lovely camo finish which for me Again, like because of the pressured fish we're fishing for nowadays, I much prefer the attention to be taken away from the weight and all on the lure. So that drop itself, you can alter that. Depends if you're casting distance or you're fishing directly below you. Um, but quite often I'll fish it at distance with a long drop and I'll just keep it in slacks um, and just move it around and it's, it's absolutely deadly. Lure choice for the drop shot, to be honest, you can put anything on drop shot. Because, you're, because it's quite slack and you're using a small hook, you can just nose hook all your lures um, and nine times out of 10, they get completely swallowed and you, you get a really good hook up anyway. Um, one of my favorites that I've done a lot of good on again is the, is the critter, for Xander and Perch. I've done really well with the critter on a drop shot. It doesn't need a lot of movement um, on the rod tip to get the, to get the lure to move. So it's a great lure for that. Another really good lure for the drop shot would be our floating creatures. Again, the floating creatures are really buoyant. So whatever distance you have that drop with the weight, that lure is gonna come off the bottom and sit there. So if you're on still water or a river with a very slow flow and you cast it out and you just let it pause, you know that that lure is off the bottom sitting there working for you. And it's just a really different presentation that can get you a few extra bites. So there we go. If you're faced with some really difficult situations like long casts into big slacks across powerful rivers or you're fishing really deep on reservoirs and you want to fish a finesse lure or a creature bait of, of medium size, try the drop shot. An absolutely deadly rig that I use more and more nowadays and catches me a lot of fish. Okay, so last but not least is a rig that has become a lot more popular over the years um, and I've used to, to good effect, to be honest. And it's something that um, when we've launched our new floating creatures, I knew it would work really well with them because they're quite buoyant. And that is the Jicker rig. Essentially, the Jicker rig is a lovely little hinge rig that sits on the bottom and if you've got a floating bait, just like our floating creatures, it lends itself absolutely perfect to this rig because it just hinges off the bottom, sits there, and you don't have to work it very fast at all. In fact, this rig works best when it's worked really, really slowly. So although the Jicker rig is a very simple rig, there's a few key components that you need to make this rig work correctly. The first one of those is a decent clip. So the clip I've chosen to use is the Strike Point Snap in a size two. I've used these for years, they don't let you down, they're good clips, they're nice fine wire which is important because that clip is very close to your lure, so you want a little little clip but with a lot of movement in it. 
And essentially, we're gonna attach that clip via a blood knot again, it's just a knot I'm confident with, um, to our 027 drop and jig fluorocarbon from the strike point range. And then all you're gonna do is thread your chosen weight on. Now it can be a drop shot weight that you've opened the eye up on. They, they work really well, or it could be like a little, a little ledger or a little bomb from, from the match fishing world. And the hook choice we've got we've gone for is a size 1.0 strike point offset hook. The 1.0 hook lends itself really well to a seven centimetre floating creature bait. Like I said before, that floating creature bait is the perfect lure for this rig. So essentially what's gonna happen is the weight is gonna sit on the bottom, the floating lure is gonna pick that hook up and that's gonna sit upright. And the beauty of this lure is it almost works itself. So you can cast it out, let it fall to the bottom and then slowly, slowly start inching it back and pausing it. So you move it back two or three inches then let it pause. And what's gonna happen is as you, as you inch it back, the lure's gonna pull downwards towards the bottom a little bit, and as you pause, it's gonna float up again. Now when rigging the floating creatures weedless, we do exactly the same method as we did the critter. We're gonna go five mil into the bottom of the body, come back up through, measure up, get the hook point out. Now the only thing I'll say different about this is if you're gonna, if you're gonna fish it weedless and put the point in, don't put the whole point in. Because these baits are so durable and so stretchy, you don't want to put the whole point in. So what you want to do is when you're putting that point back into the body, you need to go into the body, a couple of three mil, and then back out of the body. So what essentially that does is creates a little elastic band around the point of the hook. The actual point is still exposed, but that little elastic band is just keeping the body of the lure tight to the, tight to the point of the hook, so you're not going to get snagged up. And the same thing will happen if you get a perch bite it, it'll expose the point and then you can set the hook. So there we have it, the Jicker rig, an absolutely perfect rig when things are slow, when the fish aren't feeding, it's extremely cold and you know the fish are going to be sitting there looking at your lure for a long time. You can let it work in front of them, give the fish more time for those bites to materialise. So there we have it, there's four completely different ways of making the most of the lures that we've got in the Fox Rage lineup. So next time you're out on the bank, don't just keep chucking the same rig. Experiment with a few of these different rigs, try the jicker rig, try the drop shot, and see how you get on. I'm sure you'll find certain scenarios where a certain rig works a lot better.